despite the government shutdown, the launch of the Affordable Care Act went on as scheduled, but with a few technical hitches. The president marked the beginning of his landmark health care reform with a Rose Garden ceremony with a, a select group. But too much online traffic slowed down the federal government's website. The site blamed it on the media checking out the site. And immigration reform slowed down a border crossing between Mexico and Texas Monday. Wearing their graduation caps and gowns, 30 young immigrant activists tried to enter the United States. They were protesting policies they say keep them from the country they consider home. They call themselves dreamers after the failed legislation that would have provided legal status for some young immigrants brought to the U.S. illegally as children, but then later deported. We want to go home. Like, we want to continue studying over there. We want to go to college. We, we want to go back, like, just be with our families, continue studying, like, be someone in life. Because over here in Mexico, it's not the same education. It's the quality, it's not the same. Marisol Ramos is the National Immigrant Youth Alliance uh, director. She organized the protest and she joins us via Skype. Marisol, thank you so much for taking a few minutes with us today on Arise America. Thank you. So tell me, uh, this, this, uh, this act of the Dream uh, 30, I'm going to call them, was inspired by the Dreamers, uh, the Dreamers 9, if I'm saying that correctly. What did you hope to accomplish by this act of, of protest? Um, so originally nine undocumented youth um, attempted to cross uh, the U.S. border um, in July and were successful in entering the country. Um, and so inspired by the relative success of that first action, a group of 30 undocumented youth uh, crossed the border uh, Monday, yesterday, um, 30, what we call the Dream 30, plus seven more. Um, they included parents with uh, minor children who were um, in, in Mexico. Um, most of the participants are, are of Mexican descent, except for one um, a student, a young person from Peru. And the goal of the action was really to reunite uh, families, uh, young people who have uh, either been forcibly deported uh, to Mexico, Peru, um, or uh, self-elected uh, through self-elected deportation, um, and reunite back to their families in the U.S. And I wonder, was this uh, worth the risk? Because there was some risk incurred. Some of these students, I, as I understand it, were already in the in the U.S. They left voluntarily to try to come back into the U.S. with with this protest. Um, is that worth the risk taken? Because there's a good chance that the you know that these individuals could be deported, uh, if not for many years, for good. I mean, uh, every every story or individual story that you hear of the participants uh, is pretty heart wrenching, and for them, even the attempts of potentially reuniting with their families is worth it. Uh, there's a story of Valeria, a four year old uh, who has cerebral palsy, and she was actually one along with her mother, who was released. Um, Valeria is a U.S. citizen, but her mother crossed several times uh, in an attempt for humanitarian relief. Um, and um, her mother was released uh, pretty quickly uh, with seven others. There are others, others, young people, like one of my friends, personal friends, Raul, um, who hasn't seen his family in over three years. Um, it would, would have been DACA eligible, Deferred Action for Childhood Pot for childhood arrivals, um, the policy that was implemented last year, um, and had a really difficult time um, integrating into Mexican society. His Spanish was uh, pretty terrible. Um, he had a hard time finding jobs because he didn't have, although he had um, some engineering coursework, he couldn't find a job um, in Mexico. Um, and he was uh, physically assaulted during his time there. And so it quickly became dangerous for him to stay there. And so for him, the, the potential of, of reuniting with his family and escaping um, violence in Mexico um, was greater um, and worth the risk. I understand. I do understand the plight. Do you, what do you think the likelihood is that uh, these individuals, they're now, except for the ones that you mentioned, are in detention. You know, they are asking for humanitarian aid, want asylum, uh, uh, declaring uh, 
you know, uh, threats of persecution in Mexico. What do you think the likelihood is that they'll be able to stay in the U.S.? Um, at this point, we are uh, the action and the goals of the campaign is to push uh, the Obama administration to do the right thing and help these individuals reunite uh, back with their families in the U.S. And so as advocates, our goal is really to inform the public of their plight, um, which represents the 1.3 million uh, undocumented individuals who have been deported during the Obama administration. Um, and we're hoping um, that in the long run, um, DACA, the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals policy, can expand to include um, these vulnerable um, immigrant populations. All right. Marcel Ramos, thank you so much for uh, telling your story. We do appreciate it. Thank you. We now want to discuss this further with immigration attorney David, David Leopold. He is a former president of the American Immigration Lawyers Association, and he also joins us via Skype. David, thank you so much for taking a few minutes uh, with us. I do appreciate it. I understand that uh, you consider this act of protest, these young people, some of whom have left the country, were already in this country, only to try to re-enter during this protest, uh, to be risky and perhaps, I don't know, I don't want to give you a word, but how do you feel about this act? Effort. You know, I, I've been asking this question since the end of uh, July uh, during the Dream 9 escapade. I, I, I don't know what the goal is here. Uh, she said just now, um, Marcel said just now that uh, the idea was to um, uh, pressure the Obama administration, but there's no need to do that because the president has said that he will sign comprehensive immigration reform legislation. And comprehensive immigration reform legislation is designed, hopefully, to fix the broken system. So the focus right now ought to be on Congress. It ought to be on the House of Representatives. Not only have they uh, shut down the government, uh, but they've refused the Republican leadership I'm talking about, has refused to enact comprehensive immigration reform. They have a, a very uh, good working bill from the Senate. It's not perfect. It needs improvement. Uh, but they haven't even taken it up. And the tragedy here is that if the Speaker of the House, John Boehner, gives the full House of Representatives the opportunity to vote, it's going to pass. We're going to have a bill. And we won't have to worry about uh, undocumented people who shouldn't be removed from the country facing deportation. Uh, and what Marcel also really, I think, maybe she doesn't know, but uh, the Senate bill provides for the return in certain circumstances of, of dreamers and, and other undocumented people who have close family ties here. So um, I'm not sure, you know, I, look, this is America and, and we protest and we say what's on our mind and that's the beauty of this country. And I applaud the, the, the passion and I applaud the commitment. Well, I, I, I wonder what your recommendation, David, would be, though, you know, because the truth is there's been effort to, uh, to try to get immigration reform uh, passed in this country for quite some time. It comes up and it dies. It comes up and it's defeated. And then, of course, this time there was a bipartisan bill that was introduced, as you already referenced, in the Senate. In the Senate. It passed, but now it languishes in the House. So what needs to happen in the conversation to actually get this done? Because I can sort of understand, and Mary Saul did not use this word desperation, but I can understand, you know, the desperation of this population to yeah. want to remain in what they know to be their home. Well, there's 11 million people, 11.5 million people in this country who are desperate and who we need to take care of, and they're here in the United States. And what needs to happen, the conversation that needs to happen, is that Congress needs to fix this. Uh, it's not been defeated yet. It, it you know, uh, it's pending. And we have uh, a bipartisan, like you just pointed out, we have a bipartisan bill. There's bipartisan support. And if John Boehner and Eric Cantor in the House leadership allows an up or down vote, the answer is going to be yes. And they'll be able to send the president a bill. Uh, and like I said, you know, we, we know about the 1.3 million people who were deported. And that's why we're working so hard in Washington to try to fix this system. Um, I'm not sure I understand the tactic here. I am, oh, yeah, I understand. Yeah, I think yes, one place that everybody can agree is there needs to be a fix. The question is how. We're going to stop the conversation right here, but David Leibold, thank you again so much for your time. My pleasure. And this is Arise America.